Hey everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review. Uh, today we're going to go through a couple of contest entries from uh, Dirk Link's uh, September 2021 uh, monthly contest. The objective for this contest was to recreate a real life coaster. Uh, the scenery does not have to be the same as the real life coaster, um, nor uh, do you need to recreate anything outside of the coaster layout. Uh, so there were a bunch of different entries, a pretty wide variety of stuff, um, and I figured I would go through my top five entries. Oh, which is actually going to be top six, because uh, we have an honorable mention, which is where we're going to start here. Uh, so this is by Ethan. Uh, this is Lightning Rod. Um, I pick it um, as my kind of sixth entry because it was uh, pretty cool and, and certainly worth a mention, and uh, also Lightning Rod happens to be my favorite coaster. So I thought I would go ahead and at least uh, take a look at it. So there's uh, kind of a cool um, sort of dusk type palette, uh, kind of like how the trees have that sort of more saturated green and everything. So as far as the lightning rod layout goes, it's not quite using the terrain as much as the real one does. This is a launched RMC at Dollywood, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, but it does manage to follow the layout more or less uh, in the appropriate way. Um, so there's some cool building interaction. I like this uh, section here with this sort of neon uh, current going between these uh, two buildings. And then also just the kind of cool launch bits and pieces here. Um, and then another kind of nice little bit here is that the brake run is uh, shoe strong, as I guess you would say. So we have some incline brakes here. Um, transfer track, a little bit wonky. Uh, couldn't couldn't work, but... Uh, Nonetheless, it's, uh, it's still a cool entry, and uh, also over here, there's added bonus of Mystery Mine for a layout that is somewhat similar to it, um, <clears throat> here including the sort of wonky um, exit or uh, final inversion bits here, so uh, the real one sort of has some upside down hang time, which is a little bit difficult to do in the game, so it, you kind of have to forgive the glitchiness of the ride, but, uh, you know, good attempt for it. Um, and lots of uh, just interesting scenery and everything else. Um, a little bit much as far as kind of re repeating recurring textures go, but um, you know, not bad on the whole. And uh, I think it's certainly worth uh, worth the honorable mention. So let's jump into the five uh, favorites here. So we'll start at number five here. Uh, number five is uh, Darkoro and uh, Mulpje. Uh, this is Texas Stingray. Um, so first of all, as you can see, not anywhere close to a recreation of the real thing. Uh, this is pretty wild, as uh, we would expect from uh, these guys. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, Texas Stingray itself, which is a new-ish, uh, new for 2020, GCI wooden coaster at um, <clears throat> SeaWorld San Antonio. So first of all, it's nice to see a recreation of that. Uh, but... Pretty nice layout, um, relatively accurate to the real thing, and it has that swoopy GCI-ness going on. A um, couple points where your banking is a little bit awkward as far as, you know, stretching out some of the uh, sections and bits and pieces go, but uh, it works real well enough. of our little tunnel right here and, um, and everything. Um, so this entry was actually the winner of the contest as a whole. Um, this uh, contest is voted on by the community and uh, is voted out of uh, two sets out of ten. So there's the coaster out of ten, and then there's the uh, surroundings out of ten. And then those are averaged together, and everybody's score is averaged, and that's what uh, gets the <clears throat> final vote. The reason that I'm putting this at five versus... Um, say higher up I suppose is not necessarily that the other stuff isn't good it's very impressive uh very um robust it's, it's chonky uh, I think you could say as far as just the scenery goes there's a lot to it a lot of stuff to see uh, cool sculptures as you would always expect um from you know these guys um cool Virginia reel and everything here but it, it, the the map isn't focused on the coaster kind of in in any way it's um it's kind of just another thing in the middle of a circle of path, which is not necessarily my favorite style of park making. I, I've said that on a couple of occasions on the um, Andrews Amusement Academy series that um, you really don't necessarily want to lean in this kind of direction. You want to really put something sort of in the corner and then having your path interact with it or 
I kind of go on one side of it and sort of framing the space. Um, so the coaster just kind of plonked here and really doesn't seem to have anything to do with the rest of, of what we're looking at uh, here. And certainly there's a lot created around the space, but I feel like you, this could exist over here as it were without the coaster and you really wouldn't know any difference. Um, and certainly that can be said to an extent about a number of the entries, but um, it just kind of seems like the coaster is one of a number of things that you can look at. But that said, let's look at those number of things because they are pretty cool. Um, we've got a nice log flume here in the middle. Uh, a little bit um, kind of sickeningly blue water perhaps, maybe a little bit too uh, cerulean perhaps. Um, I already did say I like this, um, you know, or objects notwithstanding. I'm not a huge fan of the time twisters or wacky world objects here that are just sort of overly textured. Um, but I do love these airships. Uh, these are really cool. Uh, the flags are neat, kind of in this big form. I mean, the, the scale in general on this map is, is kind of all over the place, um, which tends to be kind of an issue on some of those things. The sign is cool. Uh, the sign's a bit much. Um, certainly not something you would expect to see. I think maybe my favorite bit might be this little bazaar here where you've got this uh, pretty cool sculpture and fountain and uh, all these little shops and everything else and then the this little ride on the side. A, a terrible looking ride for one but that's just what Time Twisters does for you uh, as well as a uh, nice textured pathway here so a little bit of aging and things like that. I love the transition into the wood pathing on this side so that's always a nice a nice touch. And then of course this giant castle, very impressive. Unfortunately there's really no functionality with it. It would be nice to see all of these things used, like say a dark ride or something else inside some of these. But um, you know, certainly impressive to see all of this size map done in uh the the one month time frame. So that I think can be impressive and commended. All right, let's move along to number four. Number four is uh, Borake and Kazulius. This is Raptor at Cedar Point. Uh, so famous uh, inverted coaster, not the first, but uh, one of the earlier ones. Uh, nice six inversion masterpiece on uh, the uh, midway, right as you come into Cedar Point. Uh, a good coaster. I think it's one of those that's uh, sort of underrated because there's just so much good stuff at Cedar Point that it's really hard to um, hard to remember kind of all the stuff. Um, so first of all, great lift hill supports for one. A nice lattice work on those. Uh, kind of a shame you can't color that vertical piece. Layout wise, not too too bad. So we're we're good so far through here. We cross over the track here, and then he looks up into the mid course brake run. Um, I believe it's a working mid course brake. Always good. Um, wrapping around here, so this corkscrew goes the opposite way to real life, but it also is a lot smaller than the real life one because that's what we're stuck with in the game. And then this one's a little bit earlier on. This kind of last little bit crosses underneath of there in the real one. Um, and this whole station and brake complex is kind of at a diagonal, maybe a 30 degree diagonal to the lift hill. So it's always a little bit difficult because you either have to really stretch it, which is what they did here for this um, first bit, or put it on the diagonal and shoestring it, or do a straight station and then curve it from there. Um, you know, either way, it's a little bit challenging to get to um, to something that fits quite right. And you can see that they ran out of a little bit of space here because you've got only one uh, transfer track location here when it should be two. Um, but, you know, it, it's those sorts of trade-offs that have to be made when you're uh, dealing with a recreation. And for the most part, the rest of this is recreated pretty well um, also. Uh, it's a little bit different from the real thing. So we got uh, two uh, sky rides here versus one. Uh, Max Air is kind of uh, off to the side here. Um, not working like the real one this year, I guess. Oops. Um, I like the colors on the Ferris wheel. Uh, it's very nice. It reminds me of um, this, I don't know, nicely put together throughout the whole thing. And then we have Wicked Twister over here. Uh, a little bit small, it seems like, compared to maybe the real Wicked Twister, but... Um, well, the real one's closed now, so that's uh, a bit of a shame. Um, and then just some nice other little details here. Uh, Architecture-wise, pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but uh, not too, too bad. Here we're using the uh, um, monorail or the suspended monorail as a little uh, food stall. Um, some other bits and pieces in here, not, uh, uh, not too, too bad. And cut off of the right area, so you kind of know what you're looking at before it gets too too um 
like too much to handle. It would have been kind of neat to see like blue streak on this side, which was not too too far away, or maybe just a piece of it. Um, but at some point, you end up getting a little bit big. Um, credit too for the uh, non-square map. So we're uh, black tiling this, or I guess maybe a custom palette there with the black tile, uh, which is kind of a nice. Uh, Nice touch there to really fit into the things that we want to fit into the whole space. So uh, very well done, and uh, certainly a nice uh, coaster and a, a good choice for uh, for a ride. So um, cannot uh, fault that one at all. Very well done. It well deserved a fourth place. Third place now goes to AJ for uh, Son of Beast. So this is a uh, defunct coaster, which was an interesting choice. Uh, Son of Beast was an RCCA uh, wooden coaster at uh, Kings Island. It was the tallest, fastest, uh, and one of the longest wooden coasters at the time. So uh, this is a pretty nice recreation of it. And honestly, I'm picking this for the layout more than the surroundings. I think the layout was done um, very smoothly. Uh, looks looks good. It's scaled down maybe a little bit from the real one, perhaps, but it's still kind of massive in the RCT sense. Um, and the the real challenge is getting these giant helixes to look um, not terrible in the game. And I think this is about the best that's going to happen. Uh, we've got our loop here. So this is the uh, with the loop. So Son of Beast existed in both uh, senses with and without the loop at uh, one time or another. Um, I got to ride it while it had the loop, so I can at least uh, enjoy that. Um, coming around, final helix, and then up into the break run here. Um, for the station itself. Uh, so really nice kind of flowy layout, um, decent custom supports. Um, I think, you know, I'd probably choose either these supports or these supports down here. Um, and then as far as the these supports go, uh, it's following the track, which I can kind of get the reasoning behind it, but we probably want to cut it and make it straight so it doesn't look sort of wavy as it comes along. Um, so this is um, a sort of cathedral-like supports here uh, where it's kind of stair-stepped down. Um, which not too bad, and the footer is certainly a good touch as well. Um, surrounding wise, there's there's a lot going on here. It's sort of this um, kind of garden farm type uh, space. Um, a nice touch here is this uh, piece of inverted coaster track, and uh, the here lies Banshee here in our graveyard. Uh, since Kings Island did the same thing, just with uh, Son of Beast in Banshee's queue, so that's always kind of fun. Then there's the rest of this sort of medieval town, I suppose, with um, kind of a lot going on. We have this church-esque building here. There's just a couple of these little outbuildings as you come along. Um, the station itself has this uh, kind of nice dark blue to it, sort of monochrome throughout the whole thing. Um, kind of nice, you know, it certainly looks, looks good. I like this wall surrounding the whole thing and the sort of garden plaza in the middle. Um, and uh, the sign is kind of neat. Uh, through here for the whole thing then you can cut back underneath and then we have a nice little village here drop tower and then this um, uh, kind of sort of mock uh, water coaster type thing with the little drop there in the turner the turntable and then our final splash uh, so that's pretty nice and then also a uh, custom uh, swinging ship here uh, so on the whole uh, very nice there's a lot of uh, different scenery pieces uh, all the buildings are sort of a similar vein, sort of the um, medieval-esque with a, an awning or two and using some of the medieval buildings as part of the base. So kind of copy-paste as you go along, but uh, it works well enough. And uh, the landscaping is nice. I like the red trees kind of mixed in with everything. Gives it a little bit of that kind of darker fall look. Um, the blue flowers maybe a little bit much, maybe a little bit... Uh, um, stand out when you kind of look at the rest of it but I, li I do like this positioning of this cool pier so you can kind of look at the uh the loop overall but uh very nicely done and uh one of uh if not the strongest layout of the competition as far as just accuracy and smoothness of the whole thing goes so that's why i uh pushed uh, aj up to number three on the list all right so now we jump to number two Number two is Shen Kitchen. Uh, this is Revenge of the Mummy at Universal Hollywood. Uh, so there are two Revenge of the Mummies. There's Hollywood's and Orlando's. Um, so here is the Hollywood version, which we're going to go look inside and take a peek. 
we've got uh, the first bit which we see launching here. So this is a uh, uh, launched coaster as you come along and there's some show scenes uh, throughout the, the space. Uh, but the real kind of interesting part of this is there's a backwards section. So there's a show scene here while it's uh, sitting here backwards. And then you take a backwards coaster section, which is actually a little bit longer than the coaster section in the Orlando uh, Mummy. They are two entirely different layouts, if you weren't aware. Uh, and then we're coming back here, and then the uh, and the little funky mechanism here to turn around with the whole thing, which you know certainly works fine. Um, no real scenery as much as there are a couple of skulls here on uh, some uh, pillars. Uh, there's a little bit of the scenic elements here as you turn around that you can see and also a uh, gear here to kind of hint at the turntable uh, that the real one has. Uh, it would have been cool to see this um, more fully fleshed out inside as far as uh, scenery and, and scenic goes, but the building is nicely done and uh, doesn't look you know, too cluttered and also it's kind of just clean and nicely put together. You as well, simple, but uh, functional. And I do get the, the Universal Hollywood vibe, uh, especially with these uh, sort of Art Deco-ish buildings on the outside with the curved um, facades. We've also got our staircase and escalator up to the upper lot. Uh, if you've never been to Universal uh, Hollywood, it's kind of split between two different sections uh, with this kind of massive escalator slash staircase through the whole thing. It's very bizarre, very weird, but... Um, nicely nicely put together here and then we've also got the jurassic park ride uh, also in the same map uh really nice uh, sculpture here on the side uh, just using the wall pieces so that's um you know surprisingly good artwork for the limited means uh, to work with and we do have the uh, ride itself so pretty pretty nicely done so this is the uh uh, space some uh, clever clever hacking here with the uh, um, the tunnel uh, within the landscape so you can actually find some uh, links to uh, tutorials for that on Dirklink server if you are interested in learning how to do that with a no custom scenery standpoint uh, if you're into custom scenery then you just use the pieces for it um, but either way very nicely put together and uh, good uh, parts and pieces up here and then some other bits on this side. Uh, we've got a um, uh, we've got a couple of buildings here, not necessarily recreating the space exactly, but uh, doing a nice diagonal on there, which is something you don't see too too often in NCSO or no custom scenery objects. Which um, too, if you're if you're new to the, uh, the Dirklink server, their contests are all in no custom scenery, so that's why everything we've seen so far has been no uh, no custom eerie stuff uh, but you know certainly has all the nice parts and pieces here and um, I do like the road and, and the kind of divider here so you get that idea of the uh, uh, the road and the sidewalk and everything else but um, very nicely done uh, nicely put together and um, very clean uh, looking for the whole thing uh, but finally our uh, number one uh, so this is uh, Enox and Ovenwood uh, this is Joris and Lager uh, George and the Dragon from Efteling. Uh, this is a dueling slash racing GCI, more racing than dueling. Uh, and they've done a, a good chunk of the Efteling here. We start with this great uh, kind of split apart and then um, kind of airtime laden race outwards, crosses up and over, and then kind of works its way back through the whole thing. Here's our one dueling moment where they kind of come together like that. Or I guess the first drop counts as well. Um, and then a couple of, couple of little funky S-bends in there just to kind of make it fit. But uh, not too, too bad overall. Love the um, finish and then also the uh, little marker for the winner on that side. So very, very cool. Very well put together as far as, uh, as, far as that goes. Uh, nice layout and... Uh, nicely done as far as the station goes. There's the photo building and your queue on the side here. Uh, also, impressive dragon, nicely put together, and uh, just kind of nice area development throughout. This fence along the uh, the water is good. Um, I like that we're using the normal watercolor uh, for one. That also kind of feels feels right. 
but there's all sorts of different parts and pieces of this uh, park uh, recreated. So we've got a section here of uh, the Piranha Rapids. Uh, I like the fact that the boats are sort of frozen, but they still have the animation of the the uh, tilting. So that was it's like like they're on the rapids. So it's a nice little touch. Got our train coming through here on this side. Um, over here we have uh, Baron 1898. Uh, their B&M dive coaster. Um, a little surprised the track isn't the uh, kind of pale blue of the real one, but um, kind of in between the blues and the greens, uh, but nicely done. Um, these stacks don't look near as kind of awful as the object does sort of on its own. So nicely, uh, nicely put to make that not look, you know, too, too bad on the whole thing. Uh, our one operating other ride here is um, the, uh, 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 our boat ride here. So this is uh, from um, Comeback Coasters, uh, which are a, bunch, a couple of former Vacoma engineers. Um, actually, Intamin had to come in and do a little bit of work on this, I believe, um, as well. It's been um, filled with uh, some issues uh, over its years, but uh, very well themed um, as far as uh, the whole thing goes. So nice, uh, nice coaster section, um, nice splash down here. And uh, the facade is great, so all the different facade pieces. Again, not a huge fan of, of a lot of these different um, textures from the expansion packs, but I think it's kind of the best you're going to do. A uh, fun touch here with the uh, water coming out of this presumed tank of some kind. Um, and then also you have uh, Python over here, um, which was, is not unexpected as a popular ride. Uh, again, shame we don't have diagonal corkscrews. Since these corkscrews are going uh, the opposite direction, um, but nicely, nicely done to see the uh, the coaster there, and um, and all of that, and then just all these little bits and pieces. So um, the area development throughout, changing of the pathways and the flowers and gardens through the whole thing is quite nice and uh, very pleasant overall. And I, I think for me, this one kind of brought together the whole package very well. It has the main coaster, which is obviously the main coaster that uh, is our focal point. It's got other things around to support it. It's got um, a, a pretty nice recreation of the layout itself. So uh, you can definitely tell what it is um, without any context at all. It's pretty easy to tell that is the coaster. Um, and then the area development is just nice. The uh, scale is pretty appropriate. Landscaping is pretty good. Um, and it just has a nice feel overall. So for me, this one was the winner. Um, a number of good entries as we've already seen just with the couple that I looked at here, but um, I will put the rest of the, um, or our link to Dirklink server, I suppose, and um, you can check out the rest of the entries there uh, if you want to see everybody's or uh, enter a contest yourself. Uh, but this is, uh, this is it for this video today. We will be back with uh, more here. Uh, coming up, now that we have finished the head-to-head -head 9 reviews, we have some freedom to do some other stuff. Uh, so we're going to get back to some individual parks and uh, probably some other contests like this. And um, also back to hacking tutorials and some other things coming soon. Um, also, we have a Discord channel now. So the reason I started a Discord was to um, help people kind of better find my stuff and um, search for it. So finding some of the archives for Andros Amusement Academy and finding specific coasters if you're wanting to see some information about that. It also makes suggestions a little bit easier and um, as far as getting feedback on any work that you would like to present or things like that, uh, I'm certainly happy to comment on it and there's plenty of other folks there also who can uh, offer the same. Uh, so if you'd like to join that, uh, check it out in the Discord, uh, uh, check out the Discord um, link, which is down in the description below. Um, I'll plug that a couple more times here in some of these upcoming videos as well, just in case you miss it. But um, as always, thank you very much for watching, and uh, we will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye now.